Adoric of Pordenone. Adoric of Pordenone, OFM, 1286-1331, also known as Odorico Mattiusi or Mattiusi, was an Italian late medieval Franciscan friar and missionary explorer. His account of his visit to China was an important source for the account of John Mandeville. Many of the incredible reports in Mandeville have proven to be garbled versions of Adoric's eyewitness descriptions. Life Adoric was born at Villanova, a hamlet now belonging to the town of Pordenone in Friuli, in or about 1286. He came from the Italian family of the Mattiusi, one of the families in charge of defending the town of Pordenone in the name of Ottokar II, King of Bohemia. Otto Hartig, writing in the Catholic Encyclopedia, says his family was Czech. Andrea Tilati, in Trecani, says this is unsubstantiated. According to the ecclesiastical biographers, in early years he took the vows of the Franciscan order and joined their convent at Udine, the capital of Friuli. In 1296 Adoric went as a missionary to the Balkans, and then to the Mongols in southern Russia. Friar Adoric was dispatched to the east in April 1318. Starting from Padua, he went to Constantinople via Venice and then crossed the Black Sea to Trebizond. From there he traveled and preached in Armenia, Media, and Persia. In all these countries the Franciscans had founded mission centers. From Seltanaye he proceeded by Kashan and Yazd, and turning thence followed a somewhat indirect route by Persepolis and the Shiraz and Baghdad regions, to the Persian Gulf. With another friar, James of Ireland, as his companion, he sailed from Ormus to India, landing at Thane, near Mumbai. At this city St. Thomas of Tolentino and his three Franciscan companions had recently been martyred for blaspheming Muhammad before the local Qadi during a domestic violence case. Their remains had been gathered by Jordan of Savarak, a Dominican who had left them a short time before and who later became the first Catholic bishop in India. He interred them at the church in Supera, near Vasai, about 26 miles north of Mumbai. Dadadoric relates that he disinterred these relics and carried them with him on his further travels. He also visited Puri, giving one of the earliest accounts of the chariot festival of the Hindu god Jagannath to the Western world in his own account of 1321, Adoric reported how the people put the idols on chariots, and the king and queen and all the people drew them from the church with song and music. From India, Adoric sailed in the junk to Sumatra, visiting various ports on the northern coast of that island. Thence, he visited Java, Borneo, Champa Kamakola 91 and Guangzhou which he knew as Chin Kalin or Mohachin. From Guangzhou, he traveled overland to the great port of Chuanzhou, Zaitan, where there were two houses of his order. In one of these, he deposited most of the remains of the four martyrs of Thane, although he continued to carry St. Thomas's head until he delivered it to the Franciscans of the martyr's hometown of Tolentino. From Fuzhou Adoric struck across the mountains into Zhejiang and visited Hangzhou, can't say. It was at the time one of the great cities of the world and Adoric like Marco Polo. Marignoli, and Ibn Battuta, gives details of its splendors. Passing northward by Nanjing and crossing the Yangtze, Adoric embarked on the Grand Canal and traveled to the headquarters of the Great Khan, probably Yasin Temur Khan, at Khan Balak, within present-day Beijing. He remained there for three years, probably from 1324 to 1327. He was attached, no doubt, to one of the churches founded by the Franciscan Archbishop John of Monte Corvino, at this time in extreme old age. He also visited Yangzhou where Caterina Viglioni's tombstone was found. Adoric did not return to Italy till the end of 1329 or the beginning of 1330, but, as regards intermediate dates, all that we can deduce from his narrative or other evidence is that he was in western India soon after 1321 pretty certainly in 1322, and that he spent three years in China between the opening of 1323 and the close of 1328. On one of his trips, his ship was nearly capsized by a typhoon but they landed safely in Bulinao, Pangasinan, Philippines. He is said to have held a mass there, in around 1324. That would have predated the mass celebrated in 1521 by Ferdinand Magellan, which is generally regarded as the first mass in the Philippines by some 197 years. However, historian William Henry Scott concluded after examining Adoric's writings about his travels that he likely never set foot on Philippine soil and, if he did, there is no reason to think that he celebrated Mass. Adoric's return voyage is less clearly described. Returning overland across Asia, through the land of Prester John, possibly Mongolia, 
and through Khasan, the adventurous traveler seems to have entered Tibet, and even perhaps to have visited Lhasa. After this we trace the friar in northern Persia, in Males Torte, once famous as the land of the assassins, in the Elders Highlands. No further indications of his homeward route, to Venice, are given, though it is almost certain that he passed through Tebris. The vague and fragmentary character of the narrative, in this section, forcibly contrasts with the clear and careful tracing of the outward way. Dot. During a part at least of these long journeys the companion of Adoric was James of Ireland, an Irishman, as appears from a record in the public books of Udine, showing that shortly after Adoric's death a present of two marks was made to this Irish friar, Socio Bofratris Odorici, Amore Dei et Odorici. Shortly after his return Adoric betook himself to the Minorite house attached to the friary of St. Anthony at Padua, and it was there that in May 1330 he related the story of his travels, which was taken down in homely Latin by Friar William of Salonia. Traveling towards the papal court at Avignon, Adoric fell ill at Pisa, and turning back to Udine, the capital of his native province, died there. Adoric in Context Adoric's journey is perhaps best seen as a diplomatic mission, in addition to its religious dimensions. Nearly a century earlier, Mongols had entered Europe itself in the Mongol invasion of Europe. Between 1237 and 1238 they pillaged most of Russia, and by 1241 they had devastated Poland and Hungary. Then they suddenly retreated. Pope Innocent IV organized the first missions to the Great Khan Tartary in 1254, entrusted to the Franciscans, as were subsequent papal missions over the next century. Nicola, Matteo, and Marco Polo made two voyages in 1260 and 1271, and in 1294 the missionary John of Monte Corvino made a similar journey for Pope Nicholas IV. Contemporary fame of his journeys The fame of his vast journeys appears to have made a much greater impression on the laity of his native territory than on his Franciscan brethren. The latter were about to bury him, without delay or ceremony, but the Gasteldor chief magistrate of the city interfered and appointed a public funeral, rumors of his wondrous travels and of posthumous miracles were diffused, and excitement spread like wildfire over Friuli and Carniola, the ceremony had to be deferred more than once, and at last took place in presence of the Patriarch of Aquilia and all the local dignitaries. Popular acclamation made him an object of devotion, the municipality erected a noble shrine for his body, and his famous saint and traveler had spread far and wide before the middle of the century, but it was not till four centuries later, 1755, that the papal authority formally sanctioned his beatification. The bust of Adoric was set up at Bordenone in 1881. The numerous copies of Adoric's narrative, both of the original text and of the versions in French, Italian, and C, that have come down to our time, chiefly from the 14th century, show how speedily and widely it acquired popularity. It does not deserve the charge of mendacity brought against it by some, though the adulation of others is nearly as injudicious. Adoric's credit was not benefited by the liberties which Sir John Mandeville took with it. The substance of that knight's alleged travels in India and China is stolen from Adoric, though amplified with fables from other sources than from his own invention, and garnished with his own unusually clear astronomical notions. There are a few passages in the book that stamp Adoric as a genuine and original traveler. He is the first European, after Marco Polo, who distinctly mentions the name of Sumatra. The cannibalism and community of wives which he attributes to certain people of that island do certainly belong to it, or to islands closely adjoining. Dada's description of Sago and the archipelago is not free from errors, but they are the errors of an eyewitness. In China his mention of Guangzhou by the name of Senskulam or Senskalam, Chin Kalam, and his descriptions of the custom of fishing with tame cormorants, of the habit of letting the fingernails grow extravagantly, and of the compression of women's feet, are peculiar to him among the travelers of that age, Marco Polo amidst them all. Adoric was one who not only visited many countries, but wrote about them so that he could share his knowledge with others. Beatification Moved by the many miracles that were wrought at the tomb of the Adoric, Pope Benedict XIV, in the year 1755, approved the veneration which had been paid to blessed Adoric. In the year 1881 the city of Bordenone erected a magnificent memorial to its distinguished son. Manuscripts and Published Editions 73 manuscripts of Adoric's narrative are known to exist in Latin, French and Italian, of these the chief, of about 1350, is in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, Paris, Manuscript Slot. 2584, Foles. 118 R. 
to 127 v. The narrative was first printed at Pesaro in 1513, in what Apostolo Zeno, 1668-1750, calls lingua inculta e raza. Giovanni Battista Ramazio first includes a Doric's narrative in the second volume of the second edition, 1574, Italian version, in which are given two versions, differing curiously from one another, but without any prefatory matter or explanation. See also edition of 1583, volume 2. Foles. 245R 256R, another, Latin, version is given in the Acta Sanctorum, Bollandist, under 14th of January. The curious discussion before the papal court respecting the beatification of a Doric forms a kind of blue book issued ex typography a rev. Camera Apostolici, Rome, 1755. Friedrich Kunstmann of Munich devoted one of his papers to a Doric's narrative, Hister. Pollitt. Blader von Philips und Gars, Volume 37. Pages 507 to 537. Some editions of a Doric are. External links. Auroric Travels translated to Italian by Giovanni Battista Ramazio, edited to Italian by Giovanni Battista Ramazio, edited.